What's up, soldiers? So today we're going to talk about a very heated and contested discussion about what is the real deadlift world record. Is it Eddie Hall's 500 kilo deadlift or is it Hathor Bjornsson's 501 kilo deadlift? So let's go ahead and just kind of get right in and break this down. This is talked about all the time. At the time of making this video, it is October of 2024. So it's been four and a half years since Thor did his 501 and a lot of people still have very strong feelings about this one way or the other. So let's start with talking about Eddie Hall first. So Eddie hit a 500 kilo deadlift at the World Deadlift Championships run by Giants Live in July of 2016. Now, as you probably know, this is the four minute mile of strength. It is something that people thought could never, ever, ever happen. And it did, shockingly. I mean, still to this day, it is one of the most impressive and greatest feats of strength in history. So you can never take away Eddie Hall doing the impossible. Even if this, this record gets catapulted way, way, way further up, Eddie Hall still was that one. He was the man to make the impossible possible. So this happened in July of 2016. He was the first in history and it was at a full complete show. So this was the World Deadlift Championships, which was the first event of a full Giants Live competition. That also means it was in front of a full audience. It was being streamed. They had the full production team. You had all the other competitors there. So it had the run and feel of a normal strongman competition, right? Now this show was done in Leeds. And now I'm gonna come back to some of these points a little later as a compare and contrast, but just kind of giving you the breakdown to start, all right? So then we're gonna take it into Thor's deadlift of 501 kilos, that was in May of 2020, and that was done at his home gym in Iceland because that was the time of lockdowns, right? So this was part of the world's ultimate strongman record breaker series. So that was the first in that series where they would have different strongmen come onto a live stream and do different sorts of records. So they would have like Alexei Novikov did a circus dumbbell for reps. People like Trey Mitchell and Randall Heinle did a 400 kilo deadlift for reps. Um, forget a few others, but there was also the Julius Maddox bench press world record attempt. There's things like that. So this was happening in lieu of these in-person competitions if the world was being run as normal. Now, let's kind of get into some of the controversies between these two. So a lot of people say that Thor's record does not count because it was done at his home gym. Okay, so some would say like, that's not fair. It wasn't at a full real show. Now, just because Eddie Hall's competition was a full-blown show, there's a few things that I think are worthy to think about, right? So like first off, this show was done in Leeds. So that's pretty close to home. Eddie Hall lives and trains in Stoke-on-Trent. So that's about a two-hour drive from the venue where that was. So you're able to sleep at home, kind of be a part of your normal routine, which is exactly what Thor was able to do, you know, minus a two-hour drive, right? So that's like, one thing that's actually pretty similar, if you think that this is illegitimate, there is a lot of similarities as far as, you know, what sort of routine was that person in? Let's consider some of the previous deadlift world records, such as Benny Magnuson hitting 1,015 raw in Mesquite, Texas, after he had traveled all the way over from Iceland. So when you're talking about, you know, having these circumstances around you, both Eddie's and Thor's were pretty much done on their daily run-of-the-mill routine. Pretty close. Thor's a lot more so, but Eddie's very, very similar because he was only two hours away from the venue, okay? Didn't have to deal with like international travel, this and that. Now, what's interesting to me is this argument about Thor only had to do it, you know, around his family and in front of like just a handful of his closest, trusted friends and family. Now. If I'm going to go for a really, really big record, I don't know how you feel, but I would rather have a lot of screaming berserk people at me. If you've ever been at a good show or a good competition, one of the reasons those are good is because of the energy and aura of your fellow competitors and fans screaming real loud for you. So to sort of say that this isn't legitimate 
because it was just a small intimate group, I actually think is not a good argument. I think it is, you know, tougher to do that than in front of a big, 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 big hype arena full of people that are screaming their heads off rooting for you. So that's just one thing I think is, again, not a good argument in favor of Thor. And now as people say like, oh, but this whole entire thing was just perfectly orchestrated and constructed for him to do this successfully. Well, if you look into this Giants Live World Deadlift Championships of 2016, may look a little similar for Eddie. And I'm not saying that this is necessarily a bad thing because I like to support the right people with the right opportunities. But when you're talking about this deadlift championship, you know, some guys that year, like Jerry Pritchett and Gabe Pena, they both said that they had a reasonable shot at this record. You know, but what ended up happening? Eddie Hall got to do his attempts in the order and the timing that he wanted. So it appears to some, I'm not giving my opinion, but this is what a lot of people in the strongman world have talked about. It does appear potentially that this was laid out and constructed for Eddie to have his absolute best chance at hitting this. Now you have to conflate this with also the interest of Giants Live as a brand. They're a UK based company and they have multiple instances of favoring some setups and some athletes, okay? So there was a call that was leaked a couple years ago about the Stoltmans saying that they were getting favorable groupings and positionings at World's Strongest Man for showing up to some of the more local Giants Live competitions. So when you're considering what Giants Live wants to do, they are a business first, you know, through Strongman, it would make sense that they would want to really hold up and support Eddie Hall, the local legend, went on to be World's Strongest Man the following year in his routes to become the greatest deadlifter of all time. Now, once again, I actually think that like we should support people that have a shot at the record. So this is not necessarily a bad thing. You know, you want to give people that opportunity to do these Herculean tasks. But that took away from Pritchett and Pena because you know, Eddie Hall, even though he almost nearly died after doing this attempt successfully, they had the whole celebration where they paraded him around for about 30 minutes. So when you had these guys that had a reasonable shot at coming in at tying or potentially breaking that 500 kilo mark, um, it gets them cold. You know, if you want to go in for your max deadlift or a max lift of anything, that timing really matters. You don't want to hit your last warm up and then wait for 30 minutes. Your body's going to get cold and you won't be ready. So, the reason that I'm talking about this is the argument that's most commonly made against Thor is that this whole thing was just perfectly constructed to give him an unfair opportunity that nobody else could have to break the record and it wasn't in a competition, therefore it's not legitimate. But when we consider that possibly the deadlift championships was set up to be conducive for Eddie to be successful, and then we think about, you know, the timing of what was going on in the world and the rest of the circumstances, you might have to reconsider. So world's ultimate strongman record breakers were a replacement for the world's ultimate strongman Dubai show that was coming that year that was going to have a max deadlift. Okay. So around the same time, this could have been done in person at a full show. As you know, the whole world went into lockdown. So what World's Ultimate Strongman ended up doing is put off these one-off record breakers, like I mentioned earlier, and try to keep this going as much as possible. Now, what's important to know is that all strongmen had the opportunity to do this. I mentioned some of the ones earlier, but even somebody like Rob Kearney was given a chance to do the American Log Press record on one of these streams. So if you had some sort of merit and you had a reasonable right opportunity there were chances to go after that record. So it's not that he was just the only person that magically got the support in order to do this. It was the right person with the right opportunity and the right time. So if anybody else had had that realistic chance to come in and pull 501, of course they would have been given that chance to do it too. So it's not that, again, he's the only one that even had the chance, but, uh, 
anybody could have done it if they could deadlift 501. And I think even today, as Giants Live continues to try and push, oh, somebody's going to deadlift 505, blah, blah, blah. If they knew with certainty that somebody was actually going to get close, then they would be putting all chips in. They would be putting all hands on deck with their marketing to give that person the timing, the place, the opportunity, and the support to do it. I think it's been a little lackluster when they're promoting their World Deadlift Championships over the last few years because I think that they know it's not going to happen yet. Given the last recent performance based on Mitch Hooper, I think it's closer than you think, but uh, we didn't really know that until about a couple of weeks ago as of the timing of this video. So when we're also considering like what is the real record, I think it is important to talk about that strongman is not powerlifting. What do I mean by that? You know, we don't have to have in the IPF, you always have to have the same type of power bar, same type of calibrated plates, everything is to specificity, this and that. Even when we're talking about records, as long as we make this as legitimate as possible, what is there to dispute? Jan Todd wrote a really interesting article right about the time that Thor was coming out to do this record and she talked about how Strawman had its roots in show and vaudeville and like as part of an entertainment act. So with the right people, right circumstances, and now in this instance, weighing the plates, showing legitimacy of the lift itself, I don't see why it's so weird that it was just this kind of one-off spectacle thing because nobody's doubting that Thor had the ability to do 501. That's like not really the argument. They're just saying that it wasn't done legitimately. But why not? Again, Strawman is in part a show. It's not just the like cut and dry, like standardized thing that like powerlifting or even Olympic weightlifting to a degree is. So I think what's special about our sport is that we have room to be a little, I don't want to say loose with it, but be different from event to event. Now, even as we go back and think about Eddie, um, excuse me, Benedict Magnuson's 1015 raw deadlift, if you can picture that setup, the place were really, really thick. So when we're talking about doing that on a deadlift bar, that's going to allow for a little more whip on the bar, which some would argue makes the lift a little easier. However, nobody's ever really came out and made a stink about that being not legitimate, even though the plates were completely different and that was done at a kind of different type of powerlifting meet run by hardcore powerlifting in, what was that, 2010? But anyways, doesn't matter. So <clears throat> all I'm saying is that there are differences in strongman. So whether it's done at a full-scale competition as a one-off special event, I think as long as we're verifying what we're doing without any possible dispute, and this includes weigh-ins, and making weight for lighter class weight records, then I think that still allows for a record. So if you haven't figured it out, I do think that Half Thor's 501 is the real deadlift record right now. And the good news is I think within the next year, he's coming out and hitting 505 or 510 and putting this entire discussion to rest. But I wanted to make this video because a lot of people still talk about this all the time. And listen, I love Eddie Hall. Eddie Hall is one of my all-time favorite strongmen. So is Thor. Um, personally, I just like Eddie a little bit more, even though Thor, I think at his peak, was the best all-around strongman in history. But they're both amazing. You can never dispute the fact that Eddie Hall was the first one to do the impossible. It's just that records are meant to be broken, and rightfully, it belongs to Thor. But if you disagree, if you have anything that you know, you think I forgot or is worth bringing up in this discussion, I would love to hear from you in the comments. So drop me something down below. Let's have a conversation about it and stay tuned for more strongman content. Thank you so much for watching and have a championship day.